Hello and welcome to another video from Tata Film Masters. I am Film Master Ingvar Jónsson. I am from Iceland. And yeah, the 10th round was really exciting. And I have yet another game that I want to look at from the 10th round. We'll be joined by uh, my dog here, Demi. But uh, she doesn't, she's camera shy. But yeah, we, we had a lot of decisive games. And this was one of them. And so far, Kramnik having yeah, one of the worst tournaments of his career. But he is accepting the risk. He's playing. Uh, more risky chess these days and he just likes to have fun I'll link to the article I had previously uh, on another video uh, on the difference between Anna and Kramnik the way they are uh, yeah, adjusting to to older age but let's get on to the game we did have the white pieces and the open tier with uh, pawn to d4 and Kramnik played knight to f6 Demi, I'm, I'm making a chess video, yes, we have c4, e6, knight c3, and bishop e4, the Nimsa Indian, do you know the Nimsa Indian? Oh, you prefer the Boko, I forgot, sorry, and here we did, uh, chose a line that, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think it's quite interesting, I played it once, uh, prepared it for a, well actually I played it three times three or four times in tournament games but uh, I did pr prepare it once for uh, for a grandmaster here in the local tournament in Iceland and very su successful preparation and almost won the game uh, I failed to convert the rook ending which was very promising but that's life so f3 it's, it's a really interesting line here the move uh, the main move is d5 which is the move that Kramnik chose and here a3 uh, this forces black to take a decision on the bishop and it doesn't make much sense to uh, retreat it although it's done from time to time to uh, to retreat the bishop to e7 it's definitely a move but the more logical and consistent move is to take on c3 that's what kramnik did and now c5 so black is attacking the center immediately and c takes d5 this is the main move in the game uh kramnik took on d5 with a pawn but taking with a knight is definitely an option uh i think it's yeah, it's actually more common to take with a knight and that's what happened in the game that uh i played against my local grandmaster white takes on c5 queen a5 and e4 and here taking on c3 is not advisable for uh for black so the knight usually retreats to e7, f6. But that's a completely different line. So in the game, Kramnik played e takes d5. Uh, we have e3 by uh, Vidit. And now, uh, yeah, it's definitely most common here to castle. But that's not what Kramnik did. He uh, released the tension on the center and played c4. Usually when black does that, he will... Uh, try to make some inroads on the on the queen side he can definitely try to use uh, the square on b3 and he will try to play against white's uh, pawn advance pawn to e4 in the center white will usually try to prepare that uh, but yeah c4 very committal move usually when you castle i think white puts the bishop on d3 here that's the, that's the main move followed by uh Black usually goes b6 and the knight goes to uh, e2. So c4 prevents that development of the bishop. So uh, white needs to find a different way to develop his pieces. And we did one with knight to e2. Knight c6 by Kramnik. And now a very aggressive move, g4. So the bishop wants to come to uh, the g2 square. Completely different uh, kind of development. Uh, Kramnik goes immediately for the weekend uh, b3 square here, knight to a5, bishop to g2, and knight to b3. Uh, we did play rook b1 here. I think this position has been reached before, and rook a2 has been played, and it's actually a very logical move because white sort of uh, 
the yeah, most logical course of action is to castle, play knight g3. And maybe you uh, you can swing the rook from a2 over to e2 to support the e4 push. But rook b1 was played by Vidit. We have castles, castles. And Kramnik continues with action on the uh, king side, the queen side, excuse me, plays b5. And here, a very interesting idea by Vidit. And this was prepared uh, before the game. But he gave full credit to, uh, to his seconds, to his assistants. And he said that they were discussing this uh, idea on the boss on the way to the playing on you. And yeah, they sacrifice a pawn here, they play e4. So what will happen is, well, if black uh, accepts the challenge, which these days Vladimir Kramnik is not afraid to do, um, white will get a very strong center. And Vlad uh, accepted the challenge. Well, if you don't, white is pushing e5 and... Uh, just pushing everything and yeah, play h3 then f4 and just pushing forward on the uh, king side so d takes e4 and f takes e4 so look at this fantastic pawn center by white uh, Kramnik decided here to eliminate the bishop pair he took on c1 queen takes e1 and bishop take on g4 so this attacks the uh, knight so white doesn't have time to attend to this one knight to f4 and yeah, white just has excellent compensation for the pawn. True, we're down a pawn, but look at this fantastic center. And I think black's main problem in this position is he doesn't have uh, a very good pawn break. I mean, the center is just uncontested completely. And white can just push it at his own will. And black is really lacking with uh, ideas of, of pushing uh, his pawns, pawn levers and plans. So, okay, knight f4. Now you have to uh, attend to this pawn, rook to b8 h3 pushing the bishop back it goes to d7 and i think that was a novelty there was a previous game with uh, bishop to c8 i'll just double check my reference yeah bishop c8 had been played in two games uh, but bishop d7 was played by kramnik which uh, seems more logical in a way protecting the pawn but now what just starts pushing e5 the knight has to move, doesn't have a lot of squares, actually only has one, 98. The queen comes closer to the king side, queen to e3, and rook to b6. But now, white is pushing here with d5, pushing the center, and again, black just can't challenge it, and his pieces are just looking incredibly stupid. Passive knight here. Bishop doesn't have a lot of prospects, the rook is strange, this can't move. And this is just about as bad as one has seen Kramnik a loser game for, for a very long time. Um, he did admit that he messed something up in the opening. I'm not sure what it was. Um, yeah, this whole approach with C4, it, it's very committal and maybe it's just, just bad as, uh, as this game uh, almost proves. But yeah, let, let's see how, how the game finished Vlad played, played here knight c7 trying to improve the bad knight but white just keeps on pushing and uh, like we did said i mean the position almost plays itself knight to e6 knight jumps into the great d5 square already threatening the rook which goes to a6 and now he just uh doubles on the f file i mean oh there's like a discovery on the rook but where are you going to put the knight it doesn't have a square so the rook is absolutely safe on f5, queen h4, rook b2 f1, and yeah, this is just uh, almost embarrassing to have to take on a3, and watch this happen, yeah, knight e7, king to h8, and now we did simply takes on f7. Kramnik took queen h5, hitting the rook, and yeah, now White has yeah, at least two winning moves, and I like the move that uh, we did play it a much, uh, much better. So find the final move for White, the winning move. What is it? I'm sure you found it. Uh, assuming you paused and came back. We did play it queen to f4, a very nice move, and 
Kramnik had to resign. Of course, if you take the queen, you will be made dead on the back rank. The immediate threat is to mate on the back rank, take back with the queen, and making Luft is all in vain. Uh, well, you can play king h7 though, but bishop e4 is coming, and it's gonna be all over. So, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, I think the computer actually says made in something like 10 after uh, queen f4. So Kramnik resigned the game and yeah, continues to have uh, a very bad tournament, but he doesn't it doesn't seem to bother him and uh, yeah, that's, that's commendable. I mean, he all he can do is finish the last three games and then continue to have fun. But, you know, have a look at the link in the article if you already haven't I had it on a previous video, a very interesting uh, take by uh, Alex Kolovic, Grandmaster from Macedonia, a very nice nice guy, and I do recommend his blogs. But yep, uh, round 11 should be starting, and I'm going to watch that and hopefully bring you some interesting games from the 11th round, and hope to see you then. Bye bye.